Hey everybody, this is Jim at SP500Chart.com coming to you on Independence Day, July 4th, 2012. We're going to look at the S&P 500, see what happened uh, yesterday on the 3rd, and see if we can get some kind of clue as to what may happen on Thursday and Friday, the 5th and 6th. But uh, before we get started, I just need to remind you, as always, that uh, the website and the video are for educational purposes only. Nothing stated at the site or in this video is intended to be used as investment advice. Look, I can draw lines on charts, but you and only you can draw your own conclusions from your own research and make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I am not a licensed financial professional. I'm just a guy who draws lines on charts. So let's uh, let's see how the lines have been working and see if we got any new lines to look at. Starting off here on a 15 minute chart, that means each one of these candles is 15 minutes of trading. You can see that uh, the S&P closed up um, uh, a decent uh, a decent gaining day on Tuesday, up uh, a little bit more than eight points, getting very close to tagging this top orange line. At which point, I would just flat out tell you, I would be on the uh, on the lookout for weakness. Okay, because this line, if you see where it has its genesis. It's got a number of touches back here, and all of them have resulted in significant, in, in the last two, very significant um, periods of selling pressure. And one of the things that uh, kind of lends a little bit more uh, credence to the expectation of a sell-off up uh, near this orange line is the fact that that the orange line is uh, ascending. So, since we are in an ascending channel after a strong sell-off, there's our big sell-off, now we're in an ascending channel, you, you don't look at this um, as, as being a good opportunity for a breakout over that line because it is ascending. Now, if we were descending and you get a breakout, then you then you look at that as being a potential reversal. But here, we already came well off the highs for the year, and now we are slowly ascending. And you know, you have we've been we've been talking about this all along. We talked about this back in May, running into early June, how we had this small bear flag that then resulted in selling pressure. Then we had this uh, kind of strangely shaped and not totally predictable uh, inverse head and shoulders pattern that uh, gives us a target of uh, right about in the 1390s, which is, you know, about 20 points away, really. So all of this, I'm saying, could end up being an even larger bear flag. That's something to keep in mind. So if we were to say, let's say we come up to this line and then we break this and then we head up for one more test, you know, in a, in a week or so up to, up to near 1390. And then it, then we, uh, it becomes apparent that the market's getting ready to roll over. Then that means we are in all likelihood going to come back down to test some levels that could be down here in the 1330s. And if these levels break, then then uh, come on back down for another go at the low 1300s. For right now, however, we do have this inverted head and shoulders pattern that if we measure the depth of the head, and let's go to the, to the least, um, What's, what's the word I'm looking for? We're going to use the least aggressive head. We're going, to, we're going to use the measurement that gives us the lowest target. Okay, and that would be going with this dark line. For one thing, there's less distance between that line and the bottom of the head. And the second thing is, where we're measuring the breakout, it's, it's significantly underneath this lighter line. So if we 
if we say that our breakout is legitimately here, but then we just had to come back for a little bit more work, that puts us up to this black line right about 1393. If, on the other hand, we, we discount this breakout and we say that was a premature breakout, then we could make the case that no, the breakout didn't happen until here, in which case we have a target more like 1386. So it's not going to be easy figuring out exactly where that target is because of some of the strangeness of this pattern and because of some of the, some of the uh, ambiguous features contained within it. Clearly, you can see this little, again, a little bit of a funky shaped inverted head and shoulders pattern here uh, propelled the market on up. We are uh, uh, in, in an area now above this green line. The green line, to remind you, has its genesis in this last peak from this right, sh uh, right shoulder of our head and shoulders top drawn across what I believe is a technically significant peak back in the middle of June. And uh, I think that has the potential of, of being a technically important line. And you know, if you're, if you're looking at horizontal lines, which, which is a good exercise too, you can see that this line right here at about, at about 1360 has also had technical significance. It, um, when it broke, we broke underneath it, consolidated, could not get back over it, and that's when some more serious selling pressure took place. Then when we came up, we bounced off of that line, which is to be somewhat expected. Then we came up, bounced off of it briefly, then were able to overcome it. So I think this line could also uh, provide some support, but you know, if we get up here and make a clear top, I think you I think you have to I think you have to expect to probably take this line out and come back down for at least a trip to this green line and if we reach this orange line uh again that's assuming that we get up here and and turn back down then I think this time you probably you probably have a watchful eye for a bounce in the 1330s but keep in mind if this is a bear flag, though you might get a bounce here, if this line breaks, then you're probably looking at um, a return to test these 1268, 1270 levels, and frankly, probably take those out and come down to this, uh, down to, to test something in the lower 1200s. That's just the nature. If this is a bear flag, I would expect, let me see, how many turns do we have here? We got one, two, three, four, five. I would expect a bounce on five, a trip up to six. At that point, we may be getting into that, uh, uh, into that neckline area for a, a um, uh, where, we, where some more serious selling pressure could be encountered. So, but the, you know, that's all just kind of looking out there a bit. For right now, we have these helpful red lines that, uh, though uh, taken out uh, for one day on the 28th, which, by the way, uh, I did not stop out of everything, but I did stop out of what would have been a very nice position to have held on to. Um, and I should not have stopped out on that. I had my stop about 0.2% too high. So... For what it's worth, I screwed up on that, but uh, have enjoyed this this uh, this uh, bullish ride up, where I think we will likely uh, meet some strong resistance either at this orange line, <coughs> or if we can put put this off a little bit, maybe a few days down the road, in the high 1380s or low 1390s. So look guys, that's about it for now. I would say keep an eye on this bottom line here. I don't think this market is gonna overcome this line, this top red line. And I would be very surprised if it overcomes this orange line 
But, you know, the markets are there, are there to surprise us from time to time. Um, so let's just keep an eye on it together. Thanks for uh, checking out the video. Thank you so much. If you're a subscriber, take care and happy 4th of July to you.